So if we hop up here, and I'll show you the sand bin, there's, there's a reason why we are doing certain things here. Okay, so we have a 20 foot deck. We wanted to make sure our compartment is, is large enough. So that's gonna be eight feet long. Um, is six foot four tall. You know, I'm 5'8", I'm just a short stumpy guy. Uh, there's plenty of uh, clearance, uh, you know, inside to walk in. Um, it doesn't make any sense to us to have a trailer that's, um, you know, for years they were four feet tall. Um, so you had to, you know, you're basically hitting your head on the ceiling when you're trying to get your equipment on there. It just makes no sense. Imagine a carpenter showing up with his, with his, uh, with his trailer, uh, with his job shack or whatever, and uh, every time he goes in there to get a to get a hammer or some equipment, he's got to duck down because he's going to hit his head on the roof. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so um, we have eight foot long compartment here, which which leaves obviously 12 foot of space back here. This sand bin is nine feet long. Now that's that's pretty big and long. And so what we've done is actually reduced the height of the sides. Um, so guys don't overload these, okay? Because it's a bigger sand bin, uh, that doesn't mean that you can, you know, put six tons of sand back here because you're gonna be overloaded. So we've reduced the sides, which also makes it a little bit easier to step over. Uh, the main reason for making this, the length that it is, depending on where you're getting your sand, for us, we get our sand at a big uh, gravel yard. Um, it, it, they got huge uh, earth movers, uh, and when they come in and they're dumping sand, uh, the buckets are so big, uh, that they have to come in kind of at an angle and they spill all over the place. Uh, with our old trailers, we only had seven feet of space here. Now with a nine footer, um, they can come in with that eight foot bucket and actually come in from the side, it makes it a little bit easier, okay? So it's, it's, there's a reason for everything that we're doing here, okay? It's not just for looks, it's not for this. Um, it's, it's, it's for your business to make it, make it as uh, efficient as possible. You know, a simple shelf like this, um, this guy back here has access to his admixtures, his chemicals, his colors. Uh, this is really, really super simple. Got that idea from a Kerber uh, that we sold our trailer to. Uh, and uh, I asked him if we could put that on the trailer because it was his idea. Fantastic. Um, there's basically, when you look at curbing, there's three essential, three uh, components. Okay, you got your sand, Portland, and water. Okay, um, if you have a trailer, that can only accommodate one of those things. Let's say for years, it was just sand. Uh, there's not enough room for your Portland, so you had to put the Portland on the back of your truck. And then you had to have 200 feet of hose to hook up to the customer's house to use their water so you can make their product. To me, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You have to be able to haul all the materials with you and be a mobile batch plant and not rely on your customer to give you part of the material, let's say the water, so you can charge them for the product. It doesn't make any sense. So when we, when we designed these, okay, we wanted to make sure there was easy access to the Portland, okay? The guy that's, mix, the guy that's mixing back here, this is the worst job on the crew, okay? You're out in the sun the whole time, you're by yourself, and essentially, if you're doing a full day's work, you're shoveling four to five tons of sand a day, okay? So this is not a fun job. Um, and if we didn't have access to a, a place to put your Portland, um, now he's got to get off the trailer to maybe go to the truck to get to Portland because that's where you're storing your Portland, okay? So efficiency-wise, you're only moving this basically once. So we load this in the morning or in the afternoon when we're done, when that guy's going back and forth, he doesn't have to bend over, he's grabbing that and he's putting it into the mixer at waist height, okay? Um, if you don't have that space and you're putting your Portland on your trailer, or, or excuse me, your truck, at the beginning of the job, two of the guys have to go to the truck, get all that Portland, and typically guys would stack them on the fender. Okay, so the beginning of the job, you're wasting time moving that Portland. And then again, the mixer now has to grab that and move it a second time on the job when it should only be moved once. Okay, you're bending over and you're not bending over. Okay, so anything that creates as much efficiency back here as possible is going to put more curb on the ground in less amount of time and this guy is not going to be as tired at the end of the day so it's really really important to have a spot uh, where you can put your portland um, we use 47 pound bags those are the kind of the norm uh, some places around the country you can't get them so the big 94 pound bags they'll all fit in here there's enough space to put about 45 bags of uh, the 47 pounders they'll stack right in here uh, and if you do the math on that, that is going to get you pretty much a full day, 500, 550 feet, depending on what size of curb you're getting. 
So this is really important to have that in there. It is, <clears throat> you know, closed so it's not exposed to the weather. That's another thing. If you're hauling that in the back of your truck, you better tarp it because if you hit a rainstorm, now your Portland's getting wet on the way to the job when it should be inside. Um, what we used to do back a long time ago when we used the old trailers, we didn't have space for the Portland or it was really, really difficult to get out of that space. We would go to Lowe's in the morning, we would stack the Portland on top of the sand, okay, and go to the first job. If you hit a quick rainstorm or, or whatever, that's all getting wet because it's exposed. It's not efficient. So by doing this, we're making it easier for the, the curbing guy to, to be more efficient and, and all that. Um, a trailer like this with 7,000 pound axles, a 14,000 pound gross, with all your materials and stuff like that, you can put about four, four tons of sand. We get weighed here, so it goes by tons um, or four yards uh, with your Portland and your equipment, and you're gonna be right at that 14,000 pound range. Um, gotta be careful you don't overload um, and things like that. Um, if you wanna haul more sand, what we do with our crew, if we need to uh, you know, do a lot of curb, we'll load up the sand, but we'll, we'll take the Portland and maybe put the Portland on the separate truck. That way our trailer is a little bit less, you know, doesn't weigh as much and uh, you're not gonna run into those problems, okay? Um, you can see here, obviously, nice diamond plate trim. It just finishes everything, you know, everything off. We offer many colors, uh, you know, probably a dozen colors, and you can match your curb machine and your pile driver to your trailer. Uh, this gentleman, David, uh, he's gonna get his. Uh, this, he, he chose black, and his curb machines are black and lime green, which is gonna look really cool. We'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but, um, so you have a lot of options, and it's not just something, hey, this is the color of the trailer, this is what you get, this is what you gotta deal with. Uh, we're kind of all about making custom trailers and equipment for that actual um, company. And it, uh, it makes you stand out a little bit, a little bit more. Um, we can jump down here, and I'll show you around. We do put hooks in here, um, and we'll show you on the next trailer too, we do have a shade and a sand cover that go here. Um, so if you wanna use your own, uh, let's say tarp, um, those are all welded on and, and those are good. Um, 